Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on X Twitter at Movies TV Mad and on Instagram and on Freds at Movies TV Mad X. A very warm welcome to Thursday's edition of the Movies TV Mad Daily. I heard the most dumbest entertainment news I have ever heard. Warner Brothers have announced that they will be releasing the Supergirl movie in June of 2026. If my maths is correct, that film will need to go into production, pre-production and principal photography before the Superman movie is even released. So without them knowing if Superman is a hit and a success, they're going to start making this movie. So it looks like DC Universe will have at least one movie a year, which I don't have a problem with. And it's a double-edged sword, really, because they want to get this train rolling. I understand that. But without knowing if Superman is a hit, it's a big problem. So it looks like by hook or by crook, this universe is going to steamroller ahead, whether it's successful or not. We saw the mixed reaction for the costume that was revealed for Superman last week. Hardly a great success, was it? Who knows when we see a better view of it, it may look better and may be received better. We'll have to wait and see for that. But just imagine, if Justice League didn't go into pre-production, production and principal photography, you know, before Batman vs Superman was ever released, maybe if they waited to see the reaction to Batman vs Superman, we probably wouldn't have even got a Justice League movie. Now, I love Zack Snyder's Justice League, but they could have avoided so much hurt, pain and financial loss if they waited to see how people would have reacted to Batman vs Superman. They could have parted ways with Zack Snyder and said, you know, because they all applauded Batman vs Superman at the studio viewing. Quite right too, they gave Ben Affleck a trilogy of Batman movies to do because they were looking at the creative process and how good it was. But in terms of money, because these are studios, these are businesses, these are consumer companies, they need to make money. That's the problem with what entertainment is today. If you don't get the thumbs up from the audience, you shouldn't really continue. And that's the point. So I think this is retreading old ground you know they've got a slate you know we've heard that booster gold will be going into production very soon we don't know who's playing booster gold i'm going to give you a tip i think it's chris pratt i could be absolutely wrong it's okay to be wrong when you're doing a well you know when you're a content creator but that's what i think chris was talking about doing dc universe and still playing star lord over at the mcu again we'll wait and see for that it looks like Tom King will be co-writing The Lanterns TV show. I welcome a comic book writer working on these properties. Some people don't like Tom King, some people do, but he has experience in writing comic books. He understands DC Comics. It can only be a good thing. But basically, announcing this release date isn't the best of ideas. Making a film before your first film is even released and going into that is a huge mistake. And I understand, as I say, they want to get this train rolling. Here's the problem with today's entertainment industry. It's the blind leading the blind. It's an echo chamber. Imagine, right? You're sitting around the table with 12 serial killers and you're the only non-serial killer. It ain't going to end well for you, is it? Because it's them. They want to kill me. Who's going to save me? No one. That's today's entertainment industry. They are desperate for a consultant outside of the industry to advise them. But when you're an echo chamber, the most frightening thing for you is a valid outside voice. They don't like outsiders. And that's where a lot of today's problems lie. These are incompetent people. But Mick, why are you and nobody, why do you, why do you think you know more than professional people 
that work in an industry. Well, let me think about that. Justice League went from Justice League to Justice League. Um, they used crappy CGI to remove Henry Cavill's moustache. Would I have done that? No, but I'm a nobody. So who's right? Me. And the millions of people around the world who criticise them for this. Recycling somebody else's movie. Didn't work out, did it? On a tight schedule. Didn't work out. Would we have done that? No. Who's right? A bunch of people in their rooms who have never worked in the industry before, right? And I mean in mainstream movies. Of them. There surely it has to be recognised that there's a problem. These people are too busy talking politics behind the fucking podium instead of doing their fucking jobs. And I don't believe this industry is going to change in my lifetime. They are desperate. They need to start listening to us. But they won't. They're not listening to us. They're not listening to the consumer. Whether they like it or not, they're a consumer-based business. Going into production of a DC Universe movie before you know how your first movie is going to do is the dumbest fucking decision ever. And they keep on doing it. And they hate being exposed, right? Yesterday I reacted passionately to Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis. And I meant every word. I won't, you know, I won't go back on anything that I said in that video. But now Variety have done a hit piece on Francis. You know, so they've got an insider apparently saying that he was kissing women on the cheek, blah, 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 smoking marijuana all day. Let me fucking say this, right? And I, I don't believe he's harassing women. It's a fucking hit piece. But anyway, if someone can give me a trailer like that, then you can sit in a fucking room smoking as much spliff as you fucking want. Why, why should I care? Why should I cancel someone? A renowned fucking director because he's smoking a fucking joint. You know, it ain't gonna work. We've got to protect this man because his movie is going to expose them. None of, not one of these cowards in Hollywood wanted to buy his ex experimental movie because they know it's going to expose them. We saw the trailer. We saw what the movie is attempting to say about new Hollywood. I, I spoke about it while we were watching said trailer yesterday or in my last video whatever the, you know whatever the timeline is who cares but that's my point the modern industry hasn't got any pioneers they've driven out all the pioneers because anyone knows if you're starting a franchise you know your franchise can't continue unless your first movie is successful we don't know if this superman movie is going to be successful. Imagine I'm running a shop and I release a line of cheese. I'm not going to release a diet version of that cheese unless I know the original full fat version of that cheese is fucking successful. I would be dumb to start making the next line in the franchise of cheese before I knew the original was successful. But these people are so desperate and so greedy and so in debt, they don't know what to do next. They keep on doing what's led them down this road, what's brought them to their knees, right? They keep, it's a routine, they're doing it. They make something, it doesn't work, and then they keep on doing the same thing. And they never blame themselves, they never admit culpability. That's the problem. It's everybody else's fault, but theirs. It's yours. It's mine. It's the white dudes. It's this person. It's that person. They'll blame any, anything or anyone but themselves. So you can't. You can't progress. You can't work on those parameters in an industry when this is what's going on. This is the same mistake as BVS. They didn't wait to see how BVS did and how people reacted to BVS. And they kept on making DCEU movie after DCEU movie. Then they removed Snyder, then they brought other people in, and then they made lesser movies. They made factory-based movies that had no heart in them, no soul. At least the Snyder movies, whether you like them or not, had a heart, had a soul, had a vision. Those movies, Birds of Prey, Shazam 2, 
Blue Beetle had no soul. They were trying to go down the Marvel route and they failed. And last year they were really exposed and they lost a lot of money and they will continue to lose money. You know, DC Universe doesn't seem to have learnt anything from the mistakes of the DCEU. Because announcing this date for Supergirl may look like, oh, they must be really confident in what they're making. Well, they can be confident, but it doesn't mean it's going to be successful. Good movies can fail. And there's no guarantee this is actually a good movie. As I said, look at, the, look at what happened with the costume, right? They released a natural picture of that costume. It wasn't, a, I don't even think it was a marketing ploy. I think it was them saying, this is him on set, you know, he's sitting down, getting dressed like you do. That's what they're trying to do. Clearly there's something bigger going on in that picture. He looks weak. Uh, the same going on outside. They didn't, look, there's no way they expected the reaction that they did. I have been told that Warner Brothers Discovery are shitting themselves from this reaction, that they're not patting him on the back and they have had some strong words with him and with Saffron and they are concerned and that's why they've tried to move away a little bit. Why do you think a week later after that reveal they've announced this release date? It's to distract from the costume reveal, it's to move on, to move on from the last car crash. That's what new Hollywood do. They don't think for a minute, is this direction we're going in the right direction? I'm a Superman fan. I'm excited for a Superman movie being in principal photography. But, 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 you know, at the end of the day, that's another problem these days. When you're working in franchises, it's never about the movie you're working on. It's about the next one, the next one, and the next one. Now, Gunn says that's not how DCU is going to be. But it has to be that way. Because you're making a franchise. When they made, you know, what, what film, you know, I'm obsessed with The Wizard of Oz right now. So when they made The Wizard of Oz, groundbreaking experimental movie, but there wasn't going to be a sequel. It was one movie. There were people having accidents. It was experimental. It cost a hell of a lot of money. It was a flop. It's a famous beloved movie, but it was released on the eve of the Second World War and it didn't make a profit, but it was a passion project. It wasn't about IP mining, as I've mentioned before, a term I fucking hate. But now it's about franchises, prequels, sequels, extensions. You know, this is what they do now. So they're not focusing on the movie that they're making. It's not about uplifting your emotions. It's not about entertaining you. It's about the next one and the next one and their commentary and their ideology. It's not about what it used to be. And I don't believe this system in our lifetime will ever go back to doing that because entertainment isn't about that anymore. And a lot of people my age simply don't understand why. I understand why because they're in a room with the same voices and there's no one saying, uh, hello, sir. Yeah, that's not really a good idea. Hello, Mr. Russell T Davies. Probably not a best idea to accuse your audience of being racist and bigots and homophobes, right? You kind of need them. Why do we need them? Why do we need them? If they leave someone else to start watching. No, you see, your principal audience, whether you like it or not, are those, you know, long running Doctor Who fans. It ain't the TikTok viewers. You can't get them. TikTok viewers are not going to sit there watching eight episodes a year at a Christmas special of Doctor Who. They probably came in to see Shooty's first episode, then they stepped out again. You don't understand. Your Doctor Who, your core Doctor Who audience, he's a Doctor Who fan, by the way. He's a genuine Doctor Who fan. Um, RTD is, and like it or not, Chibnall is as well. I've gone over to Doctor Who because it's my natural mode of thinking right now. But this is what they do. But despite all of that, if we go back to Gun, and we go back to this announcement of this Supergirl movie, it doesn't make sense to me to launch a second movie before you know how the first one is going to do. Now, Superman may be very successful. Their confidence within it may be well-sourced, but also they are now a very, very 
deluded industry. They think their way is the right way. And as I say, they don't listen to outside voices. It's not a good idea. Wait, release this movie. Wait, but they don't want to wait. They're desperados, desperate to make more and more money. And the more greedy they get, the less money they make because they've, beca they've become, in a way, a highly emotional industry. And they're so triggered and so angry that their narrative is not the only narrative anymore. That people like us doing videos get to say our piece. These outsiders, they don't understand. Oh, I understand. Well... I understand how you do things, I get it, I don't understand why you do it, why you keep on making the same mistakes and how stupid you are. Because these are no longer logical pioneers, as I say, trying to uplift your emotions, trying to be making great entertainment. Because it was simple in the old days, if we entertain them, if they like the shit we give them, they'll go and watch, we'll make money, everyone's happy. But that's not how it works. Now their attitude is, why should we give them what they want? That's their attitude. That's what they say. And the corporate shields echo that. And we see it all the time on social media. And, you know, but I've always had a slight suspicion about DC Universe. And I was always very, very interested in the fact that a fan cast like Corrin Sweat got the role. I was telling people who were saying to me, Mick, it's going to be Corrin Sweat. I said, no way are they going to give it to a fan cast. That's not how it works. So I was very suspicious how a fan cast got the job. And then he called it Superman Legacy. And I started to suspect that maybe by the end of this movie, he kills Superman off. By the way, the more links we see to All-Star Superman, the more frightened I get that he's going to kill him off. So just in case he watches this video, because I know he does watch media, he does go on social media. So just in case, James, you do watch my videos, I'm going to look you in the eye and make one thing absolutely clear. And I think, I don't think I speak for the fans or anything like that, but I'm going to speak for the fans. I'm going to be arrogant and speak for the fans and speak for myself. If you pull off a bait and switch and you kill off Superman at the end of this movie, and you think that Supergirl is going to be the main member of the House of L in this franchise and you think you're going to get away with it and have people consuming your DC Universe, you're wrong. Killing off Superman at the end of this movie will be a big mistake. If you do that, you will lose me and many, many fans. Be very careful. If this is your plan of action because you've kind of denied it, so we'll see if you're telling the truth because you have been accused of being economical with the truth before. I want you to succeed, my friend, and you need to start listening. You need to treat me as your consultant. Killing off Superman at the end of this movie will be dumb. Now, if Superman stays in play and then you introduce Supergirl, that is fucking fantastic, and I'll support you. I'll back you to the hill, especially if Superman is a great movie, and it needs to be a great movie. I was watching, is it um, out my movie reviews, our movie reviews, that posh guy who speaks, used to be a Snyderverse stan and he's doing like the road, road to Superman and all of that. Well, he said that Superman only needs to make $600 million because he was working out that they need to make two or three times what they invest in the movie, blah, blah, blah. No, he's wrong. He's absolutely wrong. Now, he says we shouldn't expect a billion dollars or more because, you know, Superhero movies are going out of fashion. A lot of them have underachieved. <clears throat> and he's right there. He's being realistic. But here's the thing, my friend. Actually, this that account has blocked me on Twitter for some reason. But don't know, don't know I get blocked all the time. It's because this is what happens when you've got an open heart, you're passionate, and you speak your mind. People want you to agree with them. People, this is, I was talking about echo chambers in Hollywood. Everyone wants their own echo chambers. That's not what I want from my platform. A bit of disagreement, constructive disagreement, is good as far as I'm concerned. There's no way that Superman finishing on 600 million globally, less than Man of Steel, 60 to 70, less, 60 to 70, let's say, let's, I mean, look, Man of Steel made about 660, 670. So, Basically, Superman, in my mind, at least, at the very least, needs to make 
the Batman money, which was around $700 million. That's for it to even be a win financially. But in terms of the fans and the public perception of this film, a billion dollars is the kind of magical number. But it's Superman. It needs to make big money. But there's no way that that film can bring in less than Man of Steel and be deemed as a hit. If Man of Steel was deemed to underachieve at 660, 670, then the same rules must apply to James Gunn's Superman. Just because you like him, just because he's cool, just because he worked on the bestest franchise ever, it doesn't mean jack shit. If Snyder gets judged for directing a movie that finished on 660 million, which was a good number, which was a solid number, it could have done better if they didn't snap General Zod's neck at the end of the movie, if they didn't have Superman doing that, that's what killed the movie's upper profitability. But that was a good figure, but it wasn't good enough for them. That's why they brought Batman into the mix with BVS. That already they were panicking. They didn't stick to their guns. They didn't stick to the Nolan and Goya plan. And that's why the DCEU really didn't succeed. They went to another plan and that plan didn't work. Then they went to another plan and that plan didn't work. Then there was another plan. And that plan didn't work either. And now the DCU is another plan. It's the blind leading the blind. It's like, oops, oh, let's move on. I bumped into you. Oops, I moved on to you. It's a bunch of know-nothings, like shooting in the dark. They are absolutely clueless. They are not pioneers. They don't know what they're doing. And by the way, a director shouldn't be leading a consumer business, shouldn't be making business decisions. Now, according to Gunn, he's making the creative decisions, which is fine, because he's a creative. And Safran is making the production decisions, which is fine if he's good enough. We don't know if he's good at his job. But here's the thing, as I say, it's the blind leading the blind. But my original point is that you should let Superman breathe. You should let that movie happen. You should see how it does. You should evaluate it. And people will say to me, well, what about Planet of the Apes? That's done kind of okay in its opening weekend. Well, there hasn't been a Planet of the Apes movie for quite some time. So people were ready for it. But what's going to happen now? A little bit successful. They're going to pummel us with Planet of the Apes, spin-offs, D-plus shows, movies. They don't fucking get it. You've made maybe a successful Planet of the Apes movie. We'll see the drop off this weekend. But you've made a successful movie that most people seem to like. Um, I'm not going to see it. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in supporting Disney at all. But at the end of the day, people seem to like it. It did okay in cinemas. It did a, it good in the opening. Let it breathe. Give it two or three years. When we got Star Wars A New Hope, we didn't get the sequel for two or three years later. They took their time. But they're now in a rush. So in the parameters of franchises, it's changed. Back to the Future wasn't. It wasn't a franchise, it was a saga, it was a story, it was made like a continuing story. Then they had willpower to end it at the third. They have no willpower now. It's all about the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. No matter how bad the last one was, they keep on making fucking more. And it doesn't make sense. There's no logic to that. There's no originality. So when we get a film like Megalopolis, which is an absolute original, not based on fucking IP farming, IP mining, whatever they're calling it today, they get a bit scared. What if this works? This will expose us. That's why they're trying to do hit pieces about Francis Ford Coppola. And I'm on team Francis, you know, Sir Francis, absolutely. Because they're scared that he's going to expose them, that he's going to expose their creative bankruptcy. Well, he is. And once people see that film, they're going to want to see more originality. It's not just a case of being original. It's a case of creating great original media, art, film, television and streaming. Streaming is dead now. Streaming is fucked. They've killed it. Now, all these companies are now doing bundles together. Well, it isn't going to work because we know you. We've got James Gunn promoting Deadpool. DC's Dead Boy Detectives, which is a spin-off of Sandman, right? Why is he promoting it? Because he's been told. Because nobody's fucking watching it. It's another fucking spin-off. 
and they do this all the time. They don't let their properties breathe. George Lucas understood after Return of the Jedi, he stopped. He didn't do more. And as a kid, I, I thought, why isn't he making more? This is ridiculous, but he didn't. He didn't want to create a plastic kind of thing that there's another one and another one and another one. And then he waited until the technology came in and he made his prequel trilogy. He made three and then he did Clone Wars. But that was groundbreaking. That was still great media. Because if you continue something, if you want to make a franchise, everything has to be quality. And the problem is that they want to keep on making stuff, but they really don't have an idea on how to make it. Hollywood is broken, everyone. And I've said it before. That can't be fixed. The industry has to be... Some, someone somewhere has to start making... You know, people have to... The good people have to start building a new entertainment industry. But studios and a studio that takes its time, that works on a project. If they want to stop and have a beer in the middle of it, they can. And then they wait. It's not about the corporate element. It's not about making a billion dollars a movie. It's about the art. We need a studio that builds for the art. And the artists at the studio need to be in a fun environment where they can pretend that where they can create fantasy worlds where they can let their art do the talking where everyone is treated like human beings and where it's not so sensationalist it's just another job because being an artist being an entertainer isn't more superior to other you know other industries or the emergency service industry i would rather say a, you know, an ambulance driver being walking, walk, walking on a red carpet rather than a Hollywood fucking actor. But our society has got everything the wrong way up. But this industry is fucked. And we need a new industry that just wants to create great art that uplifts us, that makes us smile, laugh, cry, that uplifts our emotions. And people just make something. Then they take their time and have a break. Then they come back. And when they're ready to make more, it can't be this industry anymore that's a factory. And, you know, there needs to be an academy at that studio. There needs to be kind of new talent coming through all the time as well. You know, so it's like choosing to go to college. When you leave school, you can come and join that studio's, you know, artistic academy. And they would learn everything writing, directing, performing, everything. It would be something wonderful because today's industry is not about the art form. It's not about the talent. It's not about you and it's not about me. And the fundamental proof of this is that they've announced a Supergirl movie which has to start being made and thought about and developed and principal photography beginning before a Superman movie is even released. There is no logic in that. There is no common sense in that. How can that work? If this movie is a disaster, and there's a potential of that, of it being a disaster, a, a failure, or a success, anything can happen. This movie is like rolling a dice and either getting a double one or a double six. They simply don't know how the public are going to react. When they released that picture last week, they missed judged the public they misjudged the public and it got destroyed and you think if it's just snyder bros attacking that picture and of course it was they were always going to attack it even if it was the most perfect costume i get that but the criticism has come from everywhere and there's a lot of james gunn cope coming from it his fans you know even like other people who normally attack other things, well, it's James Gunn, he's done okay, we trust James Gunn, blah, 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 blah. I trust James Gunn kind of thing. I don't trust anyone working in New Hollywood. I sometimes hope for the best for them, but hoping doesn't mean anything. So I have no trust of anyone working in the industry today. I've said he's a good, capable writer, director, but I've also said, he wouldn't have been anywhere near my first 60 choices to make a Superman movie. I know his strengths and I know his weaknesses. 
And his weaknesses are there in that photo of that suit. Because if he understood, if he got it, he would never have released that costume. And if Peter Saffron and David Zaslav were competent leaders, they would never have allowed James Gunn to release that picture of David Collinsworth in that costume.